today we're here at Metalcraft Tool Skill Center and, and Lou come over, he's working on a top secret project and he's been slipping around, you know, working with Pop on some of the metal shape and stuff. But what we wanted to do was is talk to Lou a little bit about where the industry's going. You know, Friday we were approved to do a brand new program that we're doing for kids now or younger people that want to get into the, the metal shaping and, and the car building, hot rods, motorcycles and that type of stuff. And we've got 16 areas of study that we're going to we're going to go in, but what I want to talk to you about a little bit was is where the industry is going, you know, where you feel that these young kids are going to be able to go out there and get jobs and, and, and what the industry is looking for as a whole. I think the industry is, right now, it's going to get ready to explode. There's tons of jobs out there, but they don't have the manpower to fill these jobs. And the stuff that you guys do here, it's hard work. I mean, you've got to be a craftsman. You've got to have vision to do this stuff. And if you don't have that, or if you don't have someone to at least guide these kids in the right direction, it's, gonna, it's not going to happen. There's going to be too many job openings, and guys like me and you are just going to fade away because we're getting older. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when we started, we, we'd done it the hard way. I mean, we'd done oh, yeah. one thing, and, and then we learned a little bit about it, and we sort of took off from there. But, yeah, I mean, I started when I was 12 years old, you know, and I just turned 47 years old, and, and you started young. And, and um, we've worked our way through it. But when you, when you go back and you look and say, hey, this guy's got 36 years of experience and he's been, you know, he's been doing this ever since he was seven or eight years old working in a shop, it's sort of hard for a guy to come in in two or three years and take a class or something and jump in there and go. Where do you see the skills coming from? I mean, there's a lot of different industries they borrow from. When I started out, every, when I was a kid, I started at 13. When I started out, Everybody in my neighborhood, there was probably six guys that were car guys. They were the ones who got me into it. They brought me into it. And then you start out, you start out sweeping in a shop, in a body shop or a mechanic shop. And then if you're lucky and you, and you showed some kind of mechanical aptitude, they would bring you in and say, okay, you work with this guy. And then you became his apprentice and then you came through the works. And they also had, in New York, they had what they call BOCES. It's the Votech and the oh, yeah. school system. And... They're doing away with a lot of that. So there's a huge void now that someone needs to fill because a lot of these outfits, they're not taking kids on as apprentices. They're not doing any of that. And th they're trades that are dying, you know? So someone has to step in and fill this void because small outfits, like when I was working on my own, I didn't have time to teach some kid, even though there was a few of them that hung around and I did teach. But there was nothing consistent because they would disappear or they'd get in trouble and then next thing you know they're gone. So it, there's, someone has to step in and fill this void and I see a really big problem. There's nobody is stepping up to the plate and filling it. Well there's, there's a lot of training facilities out there that are trying to, to do something but the kids are not just getting all they need. They're not seeing cars finished and they're not seeing projects completed. And, and you see it a lot of times, the industry oh, yeah. changes so quick and something comes out new from Heddlebrock tomorrow and you got to know about it. I mean, yeah, you know, and, yeah. And your TV show is one of the shows that, that steps up and helps kids see new products, but somebody's got to be there to do the hands-on stuff. I mean, oh, yeah. there's, there's nothing beats experience. And I know in your show, there's a lot of times you'll get thrown a, a curve, they'll bring in something new. And here you are over there at midnight at night trying to, trying to learn how to do that project it work. so you can so you can go out there. Um, today, you know, a lot of young kids that are interested in cars, they don't have anything in school that helps them along. You know, they need, yeah. they need more math and sciences and Englishes and stuff to do that. And what do you think about the muscle cars? I mean, your show's the muscle car show. We're seeing more with the muscle car stuff than we've ever seen before, you know? And, and I think that's a new trend, but we're pulling stuff out of the weeds yeah. that we would have jumped uh, oh, yeah. went to shredders 10 years ago. So where do you see that trend heading? I see it heading more, I mean, you know, look at, look at some of the outfits that are making these aftermarket bodies. I see it becoming big again. I really do because there's a lot of people in this country now who are older than us mm -hmm. and they have the money and they can get this stuff done. So, so there's got to be a craftsman to do this stuff. Mm -hmm. That's the trend I see happening. Because, I mean, you know, look at, look at these auction shows they're showing. I mean, these cars are going for big money. Yeah, for once you can afford to, 
you can afford to work on a car. Right. I mean, years ago, I mean, it takes the same amount of time to restore a car in 1972 as it does now. Right. Back in '72, we made eighteen dollars an hour. Now we're now we're making a hundred dollars yeah. an hour to restore cars. So I mean, where do you see as as far as the technicians that are out there in the field, and even the young guys that are coming in, you know, that's got a little bit of experience, where they've been racing or building their own stuff, working right. with their fathers and stuff. Where are you seeing the salaries falling? I mean, where what are these kids able to make? I mean, have, I mean, it's bouncing all over right now. But it I mean, is. It's starting to steady out, right? I, I see, I see a good technician. Fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, if they're good. But the thing is, is they need to stay current. They need, they need to, they need to start with their basic skills. Once they get their basic skills, they need to stay current. And the only way you stay current is to, con is to go to continuing ed education. You know, if you're working in a dealership, and they say, "Hey, we've got this new Ford transmission. Do you want to go learn how to build it?" A lot of guys that I grew up would be like, "No, I don't want to do that." You can't do that. That's how you stay current. That's how your, your salary increases. Every day you learn something, your job gets easier. So that's, that's where I see happening. But the problem is, is there's nobody to fill these voids. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing a trend in the automotive, the gap between automotive and performance automotive widening. I mean, yeah. the, dealers, the dealerships need people so bad the, the auto body shows, I mean, the shops need stuff so bad. And then you've got the performance industry that need their own type of technician. I mean, mm -hmm. this, they've got to have skills to be able to do a little bit of everything, not only the fabrication and welding. and yeah. the H, I mean, they're, they're taking skills from 30 different trades to try to make one guy where the automotive people are trying to train somebody to get the job done quick and, and get them out there. Where do you see... You know, even with the SEMA reports where guys are getting, you know, you're seeing that it's just skyrocketing, the yeah. industry. Where do you see the di the change between the performance industry and the automotive industry really standing out right now? I think a lot of it is, is because I think personally the performance industry wants to separate itself. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my opinion. And the reason why they want to do that is because now they become skilled craftsmen. And that's how come the labor rates are fluctuating so much. Because when you go to a dealership, you've got a guy, he does his job, he goes home. Now you've got this guy in a performance shop, in a, in a hot rod shop. He can do all these other things. He can naturally charge more or his boss can naturally charge more. So I see it separating even further. I see it, I see it basically like, I look at it like doctors. You've got an anesthesiologist and you've got a heart doctor. You can't have one without the other because they feed off of each other. Because a heart doctor's not going to sit there and put somebody under. He could do it, but it's not a specialty. Yeah. So I see it becoming more specialized later on down the road. I really see that. Is this because the performance industry is seeing such a problem with workforce? I mean, I mean, it's been so hard. I mean, you get a guy that's been in a dealership for 20 years and he wants to start building hot rods, he's got a wealth of knowledge that he's got oh, yeah. over the years. And he's been in, as a hobbyist in his backyard building hot rods, and then all of a sudden, he opens up a shop and he's a performance guy. You know, a lot of us don't have 20 years. I mean, that's, you know. Yeah. I mean, you can't get that experience the hard knocks way that we did, you know, over an evolution of time. So the performance industry right now needs people yeah. immediately. And it, it, are they separating themselves because of that? I mean, a little bit because. I don't think they're separating them. I don't think they're separating themselves intentionally. I think, there, it's, I think it's just a natural byproduct. Because like you said. Here's a guy who's been working in a dealership for 20 years, and he works on the side, and he decides that he's going to go out on his own. I don't think it's, I think it's just a natural thing because dealerships are becoming more and more difficult to work in because of the electronics. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys just don't have that aptitude. I don't have it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I can't do electronics. It makes no sense to me. So they, they go to things that they know and they understand. And what natural thing to do if you've been building cars on the side I'm a hot rod shop. Yeah. So I think it's a natural evolution, but I think it's the, the, the separation is becoming the byproduct of it. The imagination and the art part of building a hot rod, is, it, the mechanics part is extremely simple. I mean, they're, oh, yeah. they're, they're, they're using the same old 9-inch Ford rear ends we've used for, forever, the small block Chevrolet stuff. 